strong am I with the force? Hello and welcome to The Gravel Road, my channel which is all about cycling and related subjects such as training, tech and nutrition. This video is titled Intermittent Fasting, Beginner to Jedi, The Realistic Method. As you can probably tell, uh, this video is going to have a bit of a Star Wars theme and that's carried on through all the videos. This is video number two. If you want to check out video number one, I would suggest you do that because that's all around the mindset of intermittent fasting and getting your head around it. Whereas this is going to be going into the simple steps to get from beginner to a Jedi Knight of intermittent fasting. Following on from this video, I'm going to be releasing a week's worth of me just going through intermittent fasting, just explaining practically how I go about doing it uh, in terms of working it into a busy life, work, kids, family, training, all those kinds of things that everyday people have to deal with at the same time as, as getting into something like intermittent fasting. Because of all those other things you've got to deal with in life, it can sometimes be a bit of a mental block to start something new like intermittent fasting or perhaps a diet. But like I explained in the previous video, intermittent fasting isn't a diet, but it's the same principle. You have to get your head around it, plan for it, and it's, it's a change to your life. And if you've got lots of going on, it can sometimes feel a bit daunting. But the good news is the intermittent fasting, it's so simple just to work into your current daily life. And that's basically what I'm here to talk about is, is actually how you go about doing it. The things you might have to think about in advance of starting it, you do need to be prepared. It's like I've talked about in a lot of my videos, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're gonna go into something that's long-term and this is kind of an endurance event because you might be doing it for the rest of your life, you have to put some plans in place that will help you to succeed in intermittent fasting. You firstly have to get your head around it but then you have to work out a plan, get yourself set up and make sure you've got things in place that can make this journey uh, as easy as it should be. That'll set you up really nicely for getting going. And don't worry about any other things to do with diets and I should be eating this or I'll cut out carbs or do any of that stuff. Just, just you're going to eat normally. You're not going to radically change anything. We're just cutting out that one, maybe two things that are your like Achilles heel. The thing that you just, you know is really bad for you but you just consume it all the time. Just bring it down or reduce it to nothing. The third step would be to just have a think about your current daily life, how you go about eating. So for example, think about what time do you go to bed? What time do you typically eat your last thing at night? Most people have a bit of a routine without even knowing it. So you might have a, a cup of tea with some biscuits at nine o'clock at night and then go to your bed at 10 and you're asleep by half 10, 11 o'clock. That's probably been quite consistent. Maybe weekends it varies a bit, but generally speaking, Monday to Friday, that's probably what most people are going to do. The times might vary, but they'll definitely be a sort of common theme. Likewise, in the morning, what time do you typically get up? Most people set an alarm. That's going to be pretty much the same time every day. When, what do you do when you get up? Do you do you drink any fluids specifically or do you just get up and think oh, I'll have a cup of tea or a coffee and I'll have some breakfast? Like what time do you first consume calories? Be it a uh, fluid like, you know, a really milky coffee or uh, a cup of sugary tea or what time do you eat? You know, basically the first time you, you consume calories and have a think about those time slots and just try and work out what they are, roughly speaking. So as a bit of a, a visual illustration of what I'm talking about, and this will help your planning, let's have a look at the board. So what I've got here is what's going on at night and what's going on during the day. So at night time, when's the last time you typically eat? What time would that be, just on average? What time do you typically fall asleep? Not when you go to bed, what time do you typically fall asleep? And you'll probably find there's at least an hour between those things, maybe more. And just generalise, if it's somewhere between 10 and 11, call it 10.30. And then in the daytime, <clears throat> what time do you typically wake up at? And an easy way to tell is if you set an alarm, what time is your alarm at? And what time do you physically get up and wake? If you set your alarm for seven and you sleep and snooze till 7.30, count that as like 7.30. It's basically once you're awake, even if you're lying in your bed, when you're actually awake and you're not going back to sleep, what time is that? Then what time do you typically eat? And again, there's probably going to be a bit of a time window here. Most people don't jump out of bed, run straight to the kitchen and start tucking into a full Scottish or English breakfast or bacon roll or porridge or whatever it might be. 
typically you get up, have a shower, brush your teeth, do all these kinds of things, and then you might eat. So it's probably going to be another hour between those two, uh, generally. Or maybe you wake up, get ready, go to work and have breakfast at work, and maybe it's two hours. Um, but you've got to think about eating is not just food, it's calories. So when do you consume, first consume more than, say, 10 calories? Be it in a milky, sugary coffee or a sugary cup of tea or something like that. It's not just food, it's calories. But, but generally speaking, people break their fast in the morning with, with food. One milky coffee is probably not going to do that. It might be there or thereabouts, but fact of that. So let's look at this just as a sort of general guide. And I'm going to pick some times which I think are kind of general based on, you know, people who work maybe eight till five, nine till five, something like that. So I'm going to say, generally speaking, as a, as a, as a, a typical person, the last time I might eat is 9 p.m. And then I'll have whatever it is I'm having and then maybe an hour later I'll head off to bed. So I'm heading off to bed at 10 p.m. But, you know, I've got to get ready, get into bed, and let's just say I'm really good at getting sleep. Let's just say I, I typically fall asleep at 10.30 p.m. Let's, again, for argument's sake, say I have my full eight hours sleep, maybe a little bit longer, but let's just go for, let's go for eight and a half hours because it's going to make these numbers a bit easier. So let's say eight and a half hours from 11, uh, from 10.30 is going to be, I'm waking up at 7 a.m. And that, that's probably quite a common time. If you start work at nine or even 8.30 or something like that, good chance you're getting up at seven get your shower, zipping off to work, unless you've got to drive an hour and a half to get there and you get up earlier, but this is a typical thing. If you get up earlier, chances are you go to bed earlier, generally speaking. So let's say 7 a.m. So let's just say for argument's sake, that typical person has to spend at least half an hour to an hour getting ready before they sit down and have some breakfast. So let's just say, again, for argument's sake, 8 a.m. So that's, that's a typical example. Adjust these times to suit, but I would imagine even if you're doing a night shift, the difference between these times, between eating and eating and sleeping and sleeping and sleeping and waking, are probably gonna be fairly consistent, unless you're one of these really lucky people who can survive on six hours sleep a night. Um, so have a think about that. Write it down, even on a board or on a bit of paper, and that's probably gonna help you greatly with your planning. I mentioned in my previous video that you can do this in your sleep and that's because when you go to sleep and wake, well, when you wake up, you're in a fasted state. So if we have a look at the board here, this, this person has gone to bed uh, at nine, or sorry, the last time they've eaten is at 9 p.m. The next time they've eaten is 8 a.m. There's 11 hours between those two points. So that person has went 11 hours without eating. Okay, they're in their sleep, but in that sleep, your body has flipped itself over to working on what's in your body. It's no longer working on fuel that you've put in. You are in a fasted state. Let's just write that on the board here. So we're talking about 11 hours. This is the current fasted state for your average person, average. What we're wanting to get to, ideally, uh, probably I would say as a bit of a minimum, is you want to get to a 16-8 fast. And what that means is you're 16 hours fasted and eight hours where you're eating. So you're not fasted. So let's just put that up here, fasted. And this is eating. Obviously you're not eating solidly for eight hours. It's the the first time you eat to the last time you eat in that given uh, day, if you like. So between when you wake up and when you go to sleep, more or less. Unless you're fasting and you're pushing that out. So this is where we are, 11 hours. And this is where we want to get to, 16 hours. It's When you think about it that way, it's not that big a push. You, you're talking about an extra five hours to get from there to there. Is that achievable? Absolutely, yes. Tons of people do it. I can do it, no problem. I could do it within a few weeks, a couple, maybe even a couple of weeks I got to this point, no problem. And I'm now at the stage where I can push this out easily to 20 hours and bring that down to four and I could do that days, days in a row if I wanted to. I've got a friend of mine who just did a nine day fast. That's a whole new level and I'm going to probably set up a bit of a, a, a video podcast type thing with him to go through that. Um, 
that's probably a key point actually there's lots of different ways to fast you can do five and two where you you fast for two days and you eat normally for five days or you can just do a five day fast but those tend to be more periodic like you wouldn't necessarily do that every week this is something you can do intermittent fasting you can do every day for the rest of your life but equally you can stop it give it up for a week go on holiday for two weeks a week or whatever it might be or do it one day not do it the next day you can drop it and bring it up as much as you like this is a skill it's not a diet so this is kind of step three so you've worked out where you're currently at you understand where you're trying to get to and now we need to work out, well, how do I get from there to there? What's the approach? And it's, it's really easy. With most things, be it an endurance ride or going on a diet or starting intermittent fasting, there are some tools that you need to help you along the way. But the number of tools you need are very few and you actually have them probably to hand anyway or it's very easy to, to put them into place. If you think about the Jedi Knight, this is probably one of the first Star Wars references in this video. He's got his force, you know, he's got the force with him, he's, he's strong with the force, he can move things with his mind and he's got that aspect to it. And he's got his lightsaber. Those are the two main tools that a Jedi Knight has. So the force in this case is fluid. You've, you've got to be consuming fluids. And as human beings, we have to consume fluids. We can't go that long without fluids, water, whatever it might be, but we can go much longer without food. If you're stuck in a desert, you're gonna, without food or water, you're gonna die of not of thirst or of not having fluids before you die of hunger. You could survive a number of days, weeks, and it's been proven with just fluids and no food. Fluids obviously have to have no calories. The point of fasting is there's you're not intaking calories, be it through fluids or food. Bear in mind that a cup of milky coffee with sugar in it or a cappuccino or whatever it might be, that's going to have more calories than you can take in and, and that will break your fast. So the fluids you consume have to be zero calorie or the total amount of fluids, the calories in those fluids over your fasting period have to be, let's just say, 20 calories or less, roughly speaking. You could definitely do that with just drinking water. People get a bit bored of drinking water all the time. So things you can do, like I said before, is have low calorie juice. The good thing about nowadays is you go into the shops and there's loads of it on the shelf, even just bottles of like fizzy, low, no, zero calorie juice. There's tons of options. This is where the preparation comes in. Find the ones, one or ones that work for you and get used to drinking them before you start fasting and find stuff you like. Once you find something you like, you, you'll be able to drink it all the time. I drink this sort of juice basically the same stuff orange and pineapple different makes drink all the time pretty much all i drink every now and again i'm in a shop i'll pick up another juice that's zero cal but that's my go-to i have this bottle in the house i have another bottle at work i take it with me if i go places if i go on holiday or go away for the weekend or i'll take it with me so i'm, I'm prepped but i know from shopping that oh, i can go to marks and spencers and i can pick up a zero calorie juice there if i'm sure or I can pick up a bottle of water. Pick up a, I do like drinking water and I will do it if I'm not in a position to have juice, but you just gotta be prepared basically. Same goes with same anything, sporting events, endurance events, be prepared. That's what we're talking about here and do it before you start intermittent fasting. So that's your force. Your lightsaber is what you put it in. So the, I can't understate that the importance of this is have have a, a bottle like this, something that you like. You probably have one that you use maybe for sports or whatever. Have a good bottle that you can carry around. You know, this is great. I can put my finger in it. It's reliable. I can, you know. It's just, it's like my best friend. It goes everywhere with me. Don't rely on buying bottles of water from supermarkets constantly and chucking them out. It's terrible for the environment and it actually won't work for you. If you've got a bottle that you, it's like becomes your friend, you go everywhere with it. Like I walk around my house and Everywhere at time I stand up, I pick up my bottle and I go with me, like, you know, I'm off. Like, that's really... Whereas just a, a, a random bottle of water that you bought from the supermarket, you put it down, you walk away, forget about it, and then you've got to buy more. This is your lightsaber. This, this is key. This and your fluid. And that's pretty much all the tools you need to make this work. Okay, so... We've worked out what we're doing, we've done a bit of preparation, we've taken ourselves off of the 
fizzy drinks or the fizzy sweets or whatever it might be or reduce them as much as we can. We've not changed anything about how we normally eat our dinners or what we have for breakfast, none of that. Don't change any of that. Um, just you want to go about uh, things normally. The only thing you're changing is when you eat. That's the only thing you're changing here. And that's why it's really simple because you've got one thing to focus on. Okay, so here's how you're going to do it. You don't change when you last eat. You don't change when you go to bed or when you fall asleep because that's just stuff you do all the time. You just need to know when that is. So your this this whole process doesn't start here. It starts here. It starts at night. It starts the last time you eat. So let's say you're going to start fasting tomorrow or next week or whenever it is. You know that you, at nine o'clock, that's when you're last going to eat. But what you need to do is make a point of it being at nine o'clock. Don't be like 9.20, 9.50. If you can, do it bang on nine o'clock. Eat something at nine o'clock and that's it. And you know that's the clock started for the fasting. All you have to then do is go to bed, go to sleep, wake up. And this is, this is where things are going to change a little bit, but it's really, really simple. The key thing to remember though is at 7 a.m. when you wake up, you've got to realize that you're already 10 hours fasted. So of the 16 hours that you want to do, you're already 10 hours fasted. And typically, you know, without even thinking about it, you can go to 11. So you've, you've already won part of the battle. The thing you have to get into the habit of is when you wake up, immediately go and have something to drink. And I've touched on this in some of my other videos. Have cups in your bathroom that you can drink out of. You don't need to go downstairs to the kitchen and get a special drink. Just have a cup, fill it full of water, you know, maybe let's say three, four hundred ml of water, you know, reasonable size cup, and just down it. You're probably going to be a little bit thirsty at that time in the morning anyway. You should be able to down that, no problem. And that is going to set you up for the rest of this fasting window. So you've gotten up at seven, you've immediately had that drink, and now you can go on about getting ready, having a shower, doing whatever it is you need to do to get ready uh, to, let's just say, or for argument's sake, go to work. And let's say we're gonna head out for work just after the 8 a.m., which is when you would have typically had your breakfast. What you're gonna do, instead of eating your breakfast, and bear in mind, no tea, no coffee, with milk and any calories in it, you can have tea and coffee, but just make sure there's no calories in it, but I would hang fire on the tea and coffee for just now. I would have another drink of some sort of fluid and make sure you've got your, your lightsaber full, full of your force. Make sure you do that, get that prepped. Think about that, you know, instead of having your breakfast, get this ready. Make sure you've got this with you if you don't have it at your work or wherever you're going. Okay, so We've not had our breakfast. And let's just say again, for argument's sake, we leave back at eight o'clock, we get to our work and we you know, start work at 9 a.m. Let's just write that here. So, you know, we've got something to keep us occupied until 9 a.m. That's getting to work. While you're getting to work, just have the occasional sip. You don't need to be... The only time to have a big drink is the very first thing in the morning. From that point on, just little sips. Just It's a bit habitual. You just pick it up, sip, put it down. Every now and again, every time you look at it, pick it up, sit. So you're doing that on your way to work, in your car or on the bus or wherever it might be. And you get to work at 9 a.m. I guarantee you, you'll get to work at 9 a.m. and you won't even be, you shouldn't even be thinking about being hungry because you've been, you've been sipping away at your fluid. So bingo, you're already at 12 hours without really doing anything. So on day one of getting into intermittent fasting, that's plenty. It's a win. Don't try and push it too far have something with you at work for your breakfast so have that let's just say you have it at 9 a.m now you've you've taken a note of 9 a.m i broke my fast and i've started eating and from that point forward just go about eating through the day as you normally would don't go oh i've managed to go an extra hour and shut a face full of cake or whatever just eat normally do what you normally do and go about your working day and, and probably you know you'll, you'll go through your day have tea, coffee, whatever it is, have a Coke or whatever if you want, if that's what you normally do, but try and cut that down as much as possible, maybe limit it to one. And then you're gonna go through your day and then head home. And let's just say for argument's sake, you get home at 5.30, 6 p.m. that evening. Through this period, you need to still continue to drink your 
fluid, just little sips, because this is about training yourself to sip fluid. It's not about, at this stage, it's not about filling yourself full of fluid. It's just about getting into the habit of ch -ch -ch, filling it up. I mean, the good, good plan is to maybe go through one of these every couple of hours, ideally, but if you're eating and drinking tea and coffee and that kind of stuff, maybe every three or four hours, just, just as long as you're picking it up every 10, 15 minutes or whatever and having a sip, this is going to get your head into that mode of, of doing this. And that's really going to help you when you come to push out the window a bit further. So we're still on day one. Go about your business, watch Coronation Street or whatever it is you like to watch, Judge Judy or whatever on TV. And again, make sure you have plan to have something to eat at 9 p.m. You want to be, for the first few weeks at least, you want to try and keep some consistency. And this is the best, this is where you need to keep the consistency in the last time you eat. So set about always eating at 9 p.m. at night, um, if at all possible. You know, you might have to go out for with pals for a beer or whatever, that's fine. But generally speaking, if most nights of the week you can be eating the last thing you're eating at 9 p.m., that's ideal. If you can, at 9 p.m., try and have, think about having something that's filling, but not super sugary and stuff. Because, you know, if you eat a heap of cake or like sticky toffee pudding or, you know, something really sugary at 9 p.m., you're probably going to struggle to get to sleep. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you don't do that anyway. You probably don't eat really sugary foods, hopefully, at that time of night. Maybe you have a bag of crisps or a yogurt or something like that. I typically have a high protein yogurt with some wheat Bix or maybe you have some cereal. That's fine. Cereal with milk. That's kind of a nice thing to eat. And it's probably going to have carbs in it. You know, you want to have like nice carbs like, um, like say, uh, yogurt and, and wheat Bix and cereal and a bit, maybe even a bit of milk. These are all things that kind of help you go to sleep because you're not going to sleep hungry you're, you're satisfied but you're not loaded up with sugar like oh, no, I can't go to sleep so have something that's kind of going to make you almost a bit drowsy you know people have hot chocolate or whatever so try and try and think about that um, while you're getting into the fasting but don't change the time keep it 9pm so we go to sleep same time it doesn't really matter when you fall asleep but I'm just kind of making the point that generally people fall asleep at a certain time and they therefore sleep eight hours. So in the morning, in, in the morning of day one, when you woke up and you were at 10 hours, eight hours of that you were asleep. So you weren't even having to do anything. And in the other two hours, you weren't even thinking about it because you just eaten. So it's cool. So you go, go, go to sleep. You've got your alarm set again for 7 a.m. This is going to be, you know, every day. If you can sleep in one day to 8 a.m., all the better because that's just an extra hour of fasting where you've just been asleep. It's easy sleep. You're not going to be sitting dreaming about being hungry while you're asleep. So you get up at 7 a.m., you go about the same routine, 7 a.m., you get up, big drink of water every day, every single day. That's the first thing you do, you get up, drink water. It's like the start of your day, bang. You're setting yourself up for the day. Do the whole thing again, get ready, all the rest of it, eight o'clock, get yourself prepped. You know, this is gonna be repetitive. Head off to work and get into work for 9 a.m. What you need to try and do, if you can, and this is exactly what I did, but you can reduce these increments down a little bit if you want, but doing it in, in blocks of an hour is quite nice, actually. It's, it's much easier to deal with, you know, I didn't, I last ate at nine, I, 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 I ate at nine, whereas if I did it at 8.30, it's really, can get complicated to work out the maths. So try and go to 10 a.m. Remember, sipping your juice and all that kind of stuff. Now, this is a point where maybe you start to think this feels like, oh, this is going to be quite a long deal, right? So if you go to 10 a.m. without uh, eating or taking in any calories, significant calories, you're going to be up at 13 hours. I mean, how, you're getting close to that magic number, but maybe psychologically in your head, like, oh, how am I going to manage to not eat for like three hours after I woke up? If you're a coffee or a tea drinker, at this point, you might want to think about introducing between uh, when you get into work at nine or just back at nine, maybe maybe have a black coffee or an espresso or a cup of dark uh, black tea, uh, any sort of caffeine based drink that doesn't have calories in it, green tea, and you get you get caffeine type drink type things, supplements. If you can stick to tea and coffee, it's just a lot easier. You can get tea and coffee everywhere. You know, if you use a special supplement, what if you run out? These kind of things you need to think about. If you have that at back at nine you will absolutely get to 10 a.m absolutely no problem as long as you keep sipping your juice without being hungry 
So this is day two. So day two, you've already got to 13 hours. And if you carry on till 9 p.m., you're gonna have you're gonna be like a 1311. So you're you're getting there nice and slowly. If day two, if this going to 10 a.m. felt in at all difficult, like you were like oh, it's a real struggle, just repeat this whole process and do exactly the same thing, 9 p.m. to 10 a.m. and just do that until you're comfortable. But it should only take you a day or two to be honest. Maybe two days, maybe three. I think at this stage you'll manage to get it on day two. So let's say you, you get comfortable with this 10 a.m. situation, 13 hours. The following day or the following morning after you've gone to bed uh, last evening at 9 p.m., you're going to want to push this out to 11. And this is, might be where you have to start thinking a little bit more about how much fluid you're taking in, where you place your coffee. So strategically, you probably want to think about I arrive at work at 9, I don't want to eat until 11, could I make it to like almost 10 o'clock with just fluids? Or maybe even half 9, but try and get to 10 o'clock with just fluids and at 10 o'clock, that's when to, to take in your caffeine. So you're pushing the caffeine out as well as pushing out the fluids and that will definitely get you up to 11 o'clock. And the same is true that I talked about would get to 10. If that felt a little bit difficult, repeat that process for a day, two days, three days, four days, however many days it takes until you're happy that you can get to 11 a.m. without even thinking about it. It's an absolute snooze. If you get to 11 a.m., where are we at now? Well, you're at 14 hours. You're doing a 14.10, so like you're, just, you're so close. You've never been closer. This is, you're almost there. Your, your training is going brilliantly. When I did this, I was up at the stage within, within about a week. It's going to take different amount of time. Someone might do it in a few days, someone might do it in three weeks. It doesn't matter because this is a lifelong skill. If it takes you two months to master, fine. It, it shouldn't take you that long um, if you use these steps, but it's a skill you're going to learn. It's like riding a bike. If it takes you a while, it's fine. You'll always be able to ride a bike in the future. You know what I'm going to say, don't you now? So once you're happy with that, you push out 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. So you can see it's super simple. The only thing you're focusing on is this one time of the day. Everything else stays the same. You're not changing what you're eating. What you'll find is that as that window of time shrinks that you're eating, you probably just find you're having to knock out meals and things you would otherwise eat because if the less time you eat in, the harder it is to eat as much as you were eating when you were eating over a 12, 13 hour period. But only do that if it feels right. Just carry on eating what you're eating. You know, don't change anything too drastically. Just focus on pushing this time out. And again, the way to manage this is to be strategic about when you have your coffee. You really want to drink fluids as late as you can. And when you're starting to get to the point of like, being a bit fed up of it or whatever it might be, a little bit hungry or you shouldn't really be hungry, but you're just starting to feel like, ah, you kind of get your mind off like eating. That's when you hit your coffee and you, you'll you know by now because you've got until 11 and 10 a.m. that when you have that coffee, it's like, boom, it's like rocket fuel and you'll probably find you're super focused and you've got lots of energy and, and when you have your coffee, be conscious of that. Be conscious of what happens when you have your caffeine or your coffee or your tea. If you feel fantastic, think, it's 11, it's 11 a.m., I've not eaten, and I feel brilliant. So you know, like, you're you're just based, it, you've just about cracked it. So have at it, just stay the course. Again, repeat the process, 12 p.m., until you're happy with it. Now, at 12 p.m., you are sitting at 15 hours. So what do you have to do? Yes, you're right push out to 1 p.m. This might take a few weeks, couple of weeks, one week even, that's probably quite extreme. Two weeks, I think, is very achievable. Three weeks, maybe, if, if you're finding it a bit difficult. Four weeks, if you have to, it doesn't really matter. There's no, there's no right way to do this. You, there's no prize for doing it quickly. You know, you've got to just make sure you can deal with it. And then once you get to, the, to 1 p.m., you've hot the magic, 16, 8, and you just keep doing that. And that pretty much covers it. And you can keep doing this 
as long as you want. And once you've got through maybe a, a week or a couple of weeks of, of doing the 60 and 8 fasting repetitively, it, it'll be something you can always do. Whether you continue to do it, stop, start, you'll have it in your locker. It'll be a skill that you can take forward with you forever. If it's convenient and fits in with your lifestyle and your day-to-day -day life, then just take it out another half hour or another hour, whatever suits. You're going to be totally in control at that point of when you eat. You're going to have a much better uh, mindset when it comes to food. And it's going to be like a, a foundation or a platform that you can take forward and, and maybe start adding in other things like calorie counting or specific sort of dietary type things. To round out the video and summarize everything, you've got a few th key things you need to think about. So initially, before you even get into this, hopefully you've watched these videos and you've started to think a bit more positively about intermittent fasting. You need to go into this positive. You can't go into this thinking, there's no way you can do it. There's no way it can work. How am I gonna manage all these things? You have to be positive and go into it thinking, I'm gonna do this. I'm, I'm absolutely gonna be able to do this. If you can get yourself into that kind of place, then it's time to start looking at how you just naturally go about your, your daily life and try and work out some of these timings and then work out how you would fit what I've kind of went through into your daily life, when a good time to start this process might be in order to be successful. If it helps you, write it down. A lot of people find uh, planning to be a much more easier process when you actually write down what you're trying to, to achieve and maybe have that stretch out a week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever it might be and you can then fit in things that might be coming up in, in, your, in your daily life like birthday parties or anything like that. Then you want to just have a look at if there's anything in your current diet that you're having excessively like cans of coke or bars of chocolate and, and maybe just before starting this, see if you can just reduce them down a little bit. If you can cut them out, that's great. You don't need to cut anything out, but obviously if you can reduce those things down a little bit, that's gonna just make, make things a lot easier. But and when you get into the fasting, you'll probably find that, let's just say for example, you're eating four bars of chocolate a day, and before you start, you cut that down to two. When you get into the intermittent fasting, you start pushing that windows out, you'll probably find that that just naturally drops down to one, or maybe none, or maybe it becomes a treat which is kind of what these things really should be. If it's something you really love, like for example, I love Jaffa cakes or yum yums and all these sorts of cakes and things, you can then start to view them more as, as a reward for your hard work rather than just something you, you're you eating all day long and, and you know every time you eat one, maybe right at that moment it feels great, but afterwards you're like, uh, wish I hadn't eaten the third one of those today. And that's definitely something I find. Uh, when I'm doing intermittent fasting, when I come to eat, everything I'm eating is like, oh, this is like a reward, it's great. And everything just seems much more satisfying. I never feel guilty about having any of these things because I'm offsetting with the intermittent fasting. And I know that overall, I'm, I'm probably going to drop weight if that's what I want to do. And then I'll plateau out at a nice level. And then the final thing you need to do is just get on and do it. If you do start it and you have a bit of a, a mishap, a trip up and you get to a day where you just have to get up and you feel like you have to have a breakfast or you just you, you just have to break this cycle, don't worry about it. That's absolutely fine. You can pick it up again thereafter. If the day or days before having a break, you have managed to fast for 13 hours or 14 hours, you will be able to do that on other days. You haven't, just because you missed out one day, it doesn't mean you're no longer able to do that. Just like if you learn to ride a bike, if you don't ride your bike for a week, when you get back on the bike, you'll be able to do that. You might not be able to do a wheelie, but if you get back on the bike and start practicing, then there's a good chance you might be able to learn to do that. It's the same thing with intermittent fasting. If you've managed to get to 13 hours, you break the cycle, you go back to it, you know you can do 13 hours and you just build up from there back towards the 16, uh, 8. Hopefully this has been clear. If it hasn't been, please put comments down below and I'll definitely answer them. And if needs be, I'll do a video to, to cover any questions that you have. If you do decide to go ahead and do this as a result of these videos, I would love to hear that. If you do decide to go ahead and do it or you're already doing it, 
off your own steam. I'd still love to hear how you're going. And, and you know, maybe if there's enough comments, people start chipping in and, and you'll find there's a lot of other people doing it and they can get a bit of group support if you like. And if I can, I will definitely help you in, uh, in, in my feedback on the comments. If you are going to do this, I wish you all the luck. Hopefully this will help you. I know you can succeed. If I can do it, I know you can do it. Remember, if you like this video and you find it useful, please hit like. If you want to keep up with all the other videos that I'm releasing, please hit subscribe. It'd be much appreciated. And with that, I'll say goodbye and remember to take it easy.